Yark! Yark. 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 Hello and welcome to a Here's Just Creole video. First in a little while, but I had some new toys that I wanted to share. I was in the Doblinko Games Kickstarter for the Dungeon Degenerates board game. This is something that I've admired online for a while, but it's always been... You know, it's not even so much it's been expensive, it's been shipping it to the United Kingdom from America has been expensive. But the third printing had a Kickstarter, it made it a little bit more financially doable, so I picked this up. I've got third printing here of the original game, I've got the Mean Streets expansion, I've got a little card expansion of City Scum. I haven't opened them up yet, no, 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 I've been sitting in these for a week so I could share it with you guys. So now... I've got my knife, and we're going to have a look at this and see what's inside. And maybe, just maybe, I'll avoid severing any major tendons. So, let's begin. Okay, so here is the Dungeon Generates main game with the glorious um, day glow, almost like black light hippie van look. Let's get this thing cut open and see what's going on inside. Oh. Oh, even the even the side of the box has got some glorious LSD fueled artwork. It's not the side of the box I'm really interested in, it's what's inside that counts. That is um that is a hell of a first shot. So this is the core board. So from my understanding, the different coloured areas represent general, like a different zone, effectively. So some events that might affect a whole region will only affect things that are broadly the same colour. The little circles, I believe, represent the relative danger of places at the start of the game. So the bandit camp is four. That's quite bad. The temple of madness is five. If it was low, you'd be surprised. But uh, the watchtower is three and the fishmonger camp is two. It's hard to get that scared about fishmongers, really. Which is what they want you to think. These are the character cards for the, the base people. It's like eight different cards, all with artwork. They're double-sided. So there's, on the back side, a sort of background description of those characters, including a note of crime. I think at the start of the game, you begin in prison, and that's why they're in prison. And in here we have statistics. We have effectively, I think that's a sort of experience chart. Where is that held? We need to find out we've properly digested the rules. Speaking of, even the rules board, like quick cheat sheet thing, is set up in colours that I didn't entirely know existed. And then we get to the rules and the missions, because Dungeon Degenerates has a sort of campaign to it. If any of you are familiar with things like Zombicide or like Ghostbusters the board game or I think Gloomhaven is the same. Um, they, you can play with the same board but are doing different stories each time effectively and your characters level up with play. So there's some role playing game touches to it. Um, and I think that some of the expansions effectively add to that. They add a sort of new story arc for want of a better word. Collection of tokens, including lots of number tokens for how locations change their severity. Some 
play your characters in 2D stand-up form. It's the, is that the hand of fate? It's certainly one creepy hand. And some monsters. Some of whom have a very sort of old hammer fighting fantasy 80s motif. Some of whom look like they've ambled in from a Frankie Goes to Hollywood video, but you know. Many different colours of dice. Several different card sets. Danger. Triumph. Loot. Manly. Oh no, they're different. Oh no, I seem to recall this from my limited understanding of the game. Yeah, different colours of deck because what you gain those previously mentioned different coloured areas the monsters you encounter in them are different so the yellow area of the map was the highlands there is a selection of highlands encounters in the deck so going to different locations runs the risks of different things now this is a nice touch while i appreciate we're supposed to be dropping our use of single use plastic yes i know greta i know a game like this with all these tokens I mean, that just becomes a disaster area in a box after use. So I do appreciate the thought of this, and they've given us a way to store it afterwards without having to, as I usually do, scrounge sandwich bags and little containers and the like. So again, we have different colours of m monster deck. And some different treasure, including epic treasure. In the whole thing, Sean's art style, the main artist of this, is very distinctive. It's very much a one person's vision, and that vision is at least slightly chemically influenced. But yeah, I mean, this is this is a big part of the appeal to me in the game. I have was a lot of was just I've not seen anything else quite. I mean, it's a ghostly, monstrous umbrella, which, fun fact, kids, fun fact, it's a whole, like, Asian mythology thing. This is an actual creature. I mean, you think that makes no sense, but we have, like, something that has a horse's body and a man's top, and we call that a creature. So, you know, at least they were a bit more creative. So... Again, until I properly digest the rules, I can't tell you much about how this works, but I can tell you there are many, many, many different pieces of art in here. So it's not just, it's not just a bunch of identical goblins that you've seen in any old board game. This is kind of its own thing. Fishmonger! I said they weren't a threat. I, it's a monster. It's a fish. He's here. He's here for your fish and your life. Man. So yeah, the last deck appears to be some more creatures to cover the last areas. That is a walking tower with guns coming out of its windows. I mean, I expected to see weird stuff in this game. I did not expect to see that. And then after we clear all these, the last things in this box are epic monsters. Oh, and I think the Queen of the Rats, is she not specific to this version? I have to look up. I think she, there was a figure or something of her for the version of Kickstarter. Yeah, everything is now gone full metal album for the most badass of the monsters. And then finally, there's Signs of Power, the Hand of Doom, not the Hand of Fate, the Hand of Doom. And the Hand of Doom apparently has things to say, the Finger of Scorn, and the Law. I mean, I was going to carry on a little bit, but I'm not sure I can beat the Smelling Dwarf for this box. So let's just move on to the next one, shall we? This box was new to this Kickstarter. It's the Mean Streets expansion box. And as you can see, 
it appears that Castle Grayskull has taken a little bit too many substances and is having a bit of a purge. So let's pop open and see what new trippy horrors await in this box, which, as a great man would point out, is for not to three sad onions. Loves my life, loves my life. Is there a pretty trippy side art again? Yes, there is. Here's the He-Man motifs continuing, because that looks like Skeletor is going through some kind of jelly-related thing there. And I... Is that Jesus? I hope that's not Jesus. What do we have? Well, we have our expansion rulebook, because otherwise it's just bits of cardboard. And... These include a new set of deck, new set of cards for settlement encounters. So, like, things aren't weird enough in this game. They can get weirder when you visit the cities. We've got the summary of the new rules. Plague and Outbreak! Hmm, that bit. Immunised! Well, I didn't expect this game was going to get, like, you know, 2020 political, but those are the heroes we live in. Some more character. Fugitive Fop. Mendicant Monk. Sickly Soldier. Unlicensed Surgeon. Yeah, there's definitely quite a sort of pathetic aesthetic thing going on here, isn't it? This is not glorious high fantasy. This is very dirty around the edges. Even without reading the rules, I feel confident that I know what the plaguey disease boil fly monster of death tokens might be used to represent. Ah, we've got some new cards, we've got some new dangers and dooms and and this looks like skills played when you level up. And these are settlement encounters. So I assume this is again when you visit the various cities and what have you in the game. And some of them are fairly positive. Some of them, hmm, Loan Shark, uh, Exorcist, Funeral Procession, okay. But then we get to the monsters, and we find there's some new glorious weird monsters, War Flail, I mean, I'm pretty sure I've seen that in Love Honey, uh, Holy Cup, pretty sure I've seen that in Love Honey, Fluffy Foot, and I'm stopping the joke now before it gets weird. Okay, so we've now just got one more thing to look at, so we've already stolen one of his catchphrases, we might as well steal one more. Jump cut! Small expansion! So time! So time! So, there are a couple of similar smaller expansions. I got one of these to go with my set, City Scum! And, unfortunately, there's no nice way to do this apart from tearing the cardboard. Uh, there we go. But again, comes with its own little storage bag. And this is only 13 cards. There's hardly anything to this. But we have a couple of cards from a variety of different sets. They get mixed with the game. The Pickle Blaster here appears to be a goblin with a barrel covered in guns. This is quite Jim Henson's Labyrinth. I'm getting a very sort of trippy steampunk here. Um, and as if things weren't kinky enough with the last couple of options, here's the Torture Monk and the Convict Conscript. I mean, I don't think the game is 18 plus or anything, but kind of get the feeling that it's maybe not one to play with your gran. I don't know the relationship you have with your gran. I'm not here to judge. Well, I have... Okay, you really are going to have to have a special relationship with your gran to get away with the leather dwarf. Anyway, I'm... I've seen this game in play briefly because um, one of my chums, Peter, brought it along with him to, to boil the old hammer event last year. 
but I've yet to actually properly play it, so I might do another little video or post or something after I have to talk a little bit about how the game works in practice. I mean, on pure visuals, the card's all quite good quality, the artwork, again, is full of unique pieces of artwork. You not, don't really see that many other games with this look. It's just pretty to look at visually, and I mean, some of us aren't pretty to look at visually. We just need to get that where we can. I mean, it's okay for you, Sister Superior, because I mean, you, you're pretty to look at and you know it, right? Yeah. But once I've actually got to grip with the mechanics, I'll update you. But there we go. That is a Dungeon Generates unboxing. All thoughts so far positive. So I'll get back to you with more. But until then, rock over London. Rock on Chicago.